Let's head outside for the vocations. What should we do? Mentor a companion? We could level up um, Bertrude, maybe. We could uh, study in private or we forage for resources. Um, let's mentor Bertrude. That seems good to me. Um, there we go. Let's mentor her. Very well then, educate us uh, if thou canst. You and Bertrude review what observations you have made thus far about the various triumvirates you have confronted on your journey. She has keen insight about some of them. Let's see. Not... Uh, those who deign... Uh, not quite enough for a level up, I think. Uh, those who deign uh, confront us, we shall give increasing reason to be uh, to beware. Yeah, okay. But she should upgrade after the next trial. No, no, right, it's 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 here, right? It's about here. Uh, she's covering that right now. And not, like, here. Mm, maybe after the next trial. We'll see. If, if we succeed, it should be. Let's continue our journey. The Temple Cistern. Oh, we could also go to the Temple High Road. Uh, first of two paths leading to the mountain summit. Uh, you sense Rookie shall gain favor from the scribes along the route. Um, second of two paths leading to the mountain summit. You sense Hedwin shall gain favor from the scribes along this route. Let's do Hedwin because he's leading the party. Uh, this uh, trial. And um, it would be good for him to be strong in this. I mean, we have used him to good effect in the last one. On uh, en route to the mountain top, you pass by a monument to Underking Oars, and Hedwin happens to take notice. It can't be possible, can it, that the rites are drawing to an end? I promised everyone that would be f that we would be free, uh, that we would all be free together. Please, I shouldn't have made that uh, a promise that I couldn't keep. I know that now, but please, just please don't make me break that promise. Soon he has finished paying his respects. As you, as you prepare to continue your ascent, you sense that Under King Oz has shown him favor. Plus three glory for the next ride. Journey onward. Alright then, let's see. Let's see how it goes. You and your fellow exiles gather at, uh, gather at the foot of Scribes Gate before an archway. Archway? Archway? I never know how to pronounce that. I should really look that up. Before an archway carved of stone, where stands the gate guardian. Greetings to you, Celeste. I see that the exiles of the Nightwings have returned, even as the cycle of the rites begins drawing to a close. The Nightwings accept this as, will, uh, as the will of the scribes. <laughs> the gate guardian laughs at this softly for some reason. And you, Tariq? Do you accept uh, their will as well? Yeah. But the lone minstrel does not answer her. It does not matter. Now, Nightwings, each of you come forth and state what it is that you seek whilst crossing Scribe's Gate. One by one the Nightwings declare themselves. Uh, you all pass through as before. When Wolfred takes his turn, Celeste stops him. Bye. You? I see you wear the raiments once again. Explain. The cycle of the rites is ending. While I do not know exactly why, I have my fears. One of my contemporaries, he who fell from the summit long ago, he lives and seeks his liberty again. He stands against us now and believes his triumvirate to be the true Nightwings. I remember well the contemporary whom you mean. Then the Nightwings stand divided. Yes, and so I wear the raiments once again, in case that it, might, uh, that it may help to right this wrong. For I am Wolfred Sandalwood, and I seek liberty for each of us, so that one day we all might stand shoulder to shoulder on the other side and bring our freedom to the people there. You consider Wolfred's words for a moment. I see. Then move along. The Guardian of Scribes Gate uh, regards you all and then beckons you onward. The eight scribes bid the Nightwings welcome. Uh, go forth with glory. Samia. Celeste. What is it, Tarek? The will of the scribes. Long have we both followed it. I think you would agree. In equal measure has it drawn us close 
as separated us. But if their aim is to keep us apart for another age or longer, then... No. I do not accept their will. You blaspheme, Tarek. And at the gate, no less. But the lone minstrel simply puts his hat back on. Then may the scribes themselves admonish me. Until tomorrow night, Celeste. Okay. Let's see then how this goes. Alright. Uh, having reached the peak of Mount Elodial again, you see the vastness of the downside all around you. It leaves you deep in thought regarding which of your companions ought to go free this night, as Tiso did last time. Ah, Slug Market is here, but I don't have any money, I think. Huh. Wolfred wants to talk? Mm. Wolfred looks upon you, uh, uh, looks up as you approach and smiles. That is nice. I never thought that I would say such a thing, my boy, but, it's, but it is good to wear the raiments in the rites once more. The March of Time does have a way of healing certain hurts. Besides, the Nightwings of today, uh, we are very different beasts than the Triumvirate which took me in which took me in most, uh, almost a decade ago. Ours was a triumvirate of exactly three, well four, with Tiso, who proved to be an exception, though historically the Nightwings never took on more exiles than needed. I have mentioned my predecessor, Brighton, and my former companions, Ariza and Oralek. Perhaps naively, I had hoped my time with them would not be relevant directly um, to that we now attempt. But seeing as our stories are now intertwined, do let me know if there is more you wish to learn of them. Tell me about Brighton. You inquire about Brighton, who you understand was liberated prior to when Wolfred first joined the Nightwings. I never met Brighton in person, but I know him rather well uh, by now. Though for that matter, my boy, so do you. He studies uh, your reaction for a moment, then... Um, Brighton was, uh, was born wealthy, but not special otherwise. You would have no reason uh, to have heard of him. He was exiled for negligent misconduct, uh, misconduct. I do not know exactly why, and do not care for spreading rumors. I first heard of him through Eriza and Oralek who found uh, in me a suitable replacement following his liberation. Um, they spoke of him. Orlek gave the impression they did not see eye to eye, but he assured me I soon would hear from him myself. Indeed, as I became accustomed to the book, which you know well by now, I soon began to hear the voice. Wolfred looks at you as if to see if you yet take his meaning. You see, my boy, after Brighton's liberation, he assumed a new identity within the Commonwealth and a new responsibility to the Triumvirate, which liberated him. That voice you hear from time to time, whensoever the stars align, it's him. He is no longer Brighton. He is, he is now none other than the Archjustice Androbeles the Ninth himself. Liberated exiles retain certain burdens to their old triumvirate. They have much to thank them for, uh, not just their freedom, but their exalted status in the Commonwealth. The theocratic ruler of the Commonwealth, they do not wear masks. Uh, rulers of the Commonwealth, they do not wear masks and raiments simply for the sake of ceremony. They are not who they appear to be. Um, their public past are nothing but a fabrication. Like Brighton, they once were exiles too. Brighton, that voice. He had no love for either of us by now. He knows full well uh, what we attempt, uh, what we attempt to do. Yet he is bound by the traditions of the rites. He shall always stand on ceremony and complain. But I think he knows deep down uh, that he is powerless. How ironic that one of such high status in the Commonwealth should be so frightened of some long-forgotten exiles such as we. Anyway, that's Brighton for you. Uh, we must have seen in you the uh, he must have seen in you the potential to be one of his uh, staunch supporters for a time, if that's a path you'd want to pursue. 
I should apologize. Now then, whom else uh, should we talk about? Let's talk about uh, Ariza. You ask about Ariza, um, who you understand betrayed Oralek at the moment of his liberation, but then perished in the Shimmer Pool. I'm afraid uh, you know the brunt of it, my boy. But I suppose you ought to know something of Ariza's past, lest you be quick to judge her solely by her actions. Mind you, I would never make excuse excuses for the terrible choice she ultimately made, but her life, I understand, was very difficult. Ariza had been uh, exiled for the foulest of acts. You could see it plainly branded on her face. Such was the heinousness of what she did in the eyes of the Commonwealth. She was um, an apprentice blacksmith in her youth, taking up the post left by her brother. He had fallen in battle on the blood border, despite wielding his father's own lance and armor. Her father never quite recovered after this, and had grown cruel and detached. It was Ariza who took the brunt of his fury. He expected the impossible of her. One day it was all too much for her. So when next he lashed out at her, she, well, she struck back. She struck back again and again and again. When they came for her, her father was gone, and she was not herself. She was promptly cast into the downside for the crime uh, where, he, uh, where her hatred for the Commonwealth only grew. Ariza always was intense in her demeanor, haunted by her father's memory. More than that, uh, her chief motive for wanting back her freedom was, in hindsight, not a healthy one. She longed to join our nation's enemies to build... Uh, to build for the highway remnants a great siege engine that could shatter the defenses of the Commonwealth and forever end our feud. What she ultimately did to Orlek, it was an act of pure and thoughtless desperation. I do not think that it was simply evil, nor do I think it was personal. What is it, Praxis? I often wondered, though, if in her final moments in the Shimmer Pool she understood what she had done and uh, the depth to which she had fallen. Uh, for years, I must admit, I hated her, but now, my only hope is that she found uh, a peace untenable during her time, uh, during her relatively short life in the downside and the Commonwealth. Furthermore, I hope the life of Ariza offers some perspectives yet to those of us who have not made the same mistakes. There's a room, Vesta. Now then, uh, was there something else? Oralek. You ask about what Oralek was when he and Wolfred first became acquainted. Wolfred remained silent for a time. I was very, very sick, you know, when I first landed in the downside. The long, drip, uh, the long trip down the river must have been a little much for me. It was Oralek who found me. He could not have known of my capacity to read before he revived me. He was a physician. Intolerant of the sight of suffering of any kind. Not just any physician, mind you, a gifted, highly decorated one. He served on the front. Back then, skirmishes erupted frequently, and those such as Oralek, they had to deal with many casualties on either side. In time, he said he grew repulsed by what he saw. Uh, this sowed in his heart a yearning for an end to all the bloodshed. So he tried to use his status to negotiate a treaty with the High Wing Remnants. It must have gone about how you'd expect. He was given direct orders to return to the front, but when he refused to soil his hands again, they cast him to the downside. Here he gained the notice of the Nightwings, and before long he grew to be one of the finest rights conductors anyone has ever seen. He was instrumental in the liberation of his companions, whose role in the Triumvirate were later filled by Ariza and me. In time, Oralek's own opportunity for freedom had come up. He longed for it, so that with uh, his exalted status, he may stand a better chance of, nego uh, of negotiating peace. However, on the evening of his liberation, well, you know the story from that point. Wolfred breathes a heavy sigh. He and I were kindred spirits for a while. I could not bear to think that he was gone, and now I still cannot entirely believe that he is back. He is, now, uh, he is our adversary now, transformed, grown cold. Still, 
Part of me is happy that he lives. Make no mistake, of course, I shall not be swayed against our plan, not by Orlek or anyone. As I have said before, we share a higher calling now. As for Orlek, he wants his freedom still, although I wonder if he still remembers why. Anyway, was there something else, my boy? I'll bid him farewell for now. Uh, you bid Wolfred a good afternoon and leave him with his memories. My pleasure, reader. Reflecting on the past from time to time helps demonstrate how far we've come, yet how much farther we yet uh, we have yet to go. All right then, let's head outside, visit the slug market real quick. I don't think we. No, oh, we have 44. Um, hey guys, so like. I don't know what's going on up there with all them stars all acting real weird and stuff, but let me tell you something here. You ain't gonna find a better deal on all this stuff from anybody, I mean anybody, in the downside. You can trust me when I tell you that, okay? So go ahead and stock up, okay? What do we, what do we want? Uh, fortified Sun Serum. Permanently gain, uh, permanently grants one hope. Sounds good, but I don't really have um, what I need. Oh, I'm missing three. Star Splinter. You know what? I fling the orb so little, I'm just gonna sell that now. And I'm gonna get the uh, Stoop of Stardust. That's the... Nope. Uh, didn't mean to do that. Let's get that. Yes. Very good. Thank you for your service. You guys take care, okay? And thanks for doing business. You are welcome, my friend. Once more you have gained... Uh, yeah, once more you have gained the fall of Soliam, where one among you may go free. But first, you shall have to prevail against the essence in the Liberation Rite. Reader, your companions are gathered here under the fall. They shall be counting on you. Indeed, as the cycle of the right turns ever faster, so too is our plan set in motion. My agents in the Commonwealth are beginning to cause a bit of a stir out there, and word has reached high places that the rights are ending. This is our chance, though. Let us not despair, should victory elude us here. We shall make the most of uh, whatever the scribes may have in store for us. That is to say, good luck, my boy, it's time. Okay, let's see. I'm selecting Headwind today. Alright then. Yeah, let's commence with the right. Let's see how it goes. I am a bit worried about the Essence, if I'm being honest. They have been rough. Once At more, times. the night wings gain the summit of the sacred Mount Aladiel to conduct the liberation rite. Even as the stars themselves abandon you. Make yes, good yes. upon these final opportunities, reader. This glorious age old tradition coming to an end upon your watch. I trust your adversaries, the essence, shall not throw away this chance. Choose yeah. now who may go free, should they unfortunately fail. The pious burn in each of the triumvirates is present and prepared. I concur, the pious burn in each of the triumvirates is present and prepared. Then anointed one of the essence, come forth now and declare yourself and pay any respects you have unto your adversaries the Nightwings. Tamitha swoops down from somewhere and unfastens her mask. I am known as Tamitha Vane. I mean to regain my ancestral home and promptly resume my responsibilities as flight tactician of the High Wing Remnants. Our long stalemate against the Commonwealth shall soon be ended, should I and several of my sisters manage to rejoin our clan. Then our vengeance shall be swift and thorough. Your quarrel with the con your quarrel with the country that cast you into exile is beneath the notion of the scribes, Tamitha Vane. Here, you shall be judged under the stars. My quarry with the Commonwealth is all that gave me and my sister's st uh, strength to reach this point. The scribes ought well take heed of how my people suffer. 
We are not weaklings anymore, like your Triesta Tiffis. We shall not fall in line with uh, flightless fools and their naked attempts to subsume our heritage, our culture. Speak not again thus of the saint, or you shall be expelled, Tamitha Vane. <laughs> Tamitha scoffs and turns her attention towards your side. And Nightwings, as for you, the fury we shall imminently show is nothing in comparison to the hatred growing for your commonwealth uh, in the mountains on the other side. She signals uh, to her sister to ready themselves. We seek, uh, you seek your freedom, but there shall be nothing save for devastation should you manage to return. Ash and Cold plus 25. Hmm. Nightwings, your decision on whose uh, on whose behalf you shall conduct the liberation rites. Rita, I would ask you to choose wisely, but I am sure you know no other way. And you? Prepare your song, Tarek. Of course, Celeste. 